Welcome YouTubers. Today we're going to be doing a reloading video on reloading some 9mm 130 power factor USPSA rounds. I'm going to be doing this video on a Hornady AP press. And we'll take a second here before we get reloaded and talk through some of the features. So up on the very top here I have a mirror from Inline Fabrication. As you can see, the mirror allows me to look in and see how much uh, brass is left in the case feeder. Next, we have a Hornady case feeder. On this press, I do have the ammo plant uh, measuring or recording system, I guess you would say. It does a round count, keeps track of the primer levels, the powder level, the powder charge, and the primer slide if it wants each time. Uh, to give you an example, right now everything is green, so it means the press is good to go. I'm going to reach up here and push down on the powder uh, level sensor, sensor. So if you push on that, you can see the light now turns red. And we get a audible alarm telling you that something is wrong in the press and what exactly it is. Uh, so from there, we can go down and look. I personally do not use a bullet feeder, which I'll explain here in a few minutes. So I have it set up with a inline fabrication dual tray mount system. Uh, so on that, I have two large uh, inline fabrication trays with the uh, tray bin blockers on the front. Down below, I also have the double output loaded cases bins. That is also an adapter plate from inline fabrication. My press is mounted on a inline fabrication ultra mount. It is also the quick change edition, so I can switch it out to other presses if I want. I'm using an inline fabrication roller handle. Uh, I found the factory one. I didn't care for how it felt in my hand and the fact that it didn't roll through the priming cycle. So I use that now. It is a uh, lot uh, simpler and I think easier on my hands. And then we're going to take a look at up top here and what we have going on. So station one starts right here. This is the resize and deprime prime station. Station two, I have a case neck bell die in. Station three, I have the powder measure in. Station four is the bullet seating die. And for me, station five is the um, Lee factory crimp die for nine millimeter. Another thing that I have that's really nice is I have the inline fabrication LED skylight that uh, drops right down through the center hole here. Uh, during the day, you can kind of see the light, but as things get darker out and you lose some of the natural light, you can uh, definitely see a change. So next here I want to talk about some of the components I'll be using. Um, I am using some mixed head stamp 9mm brass. I have a, this one happens to be a Winchester it looks like. I have a local uh, guy that picks up once fired range brass. He stainless steel cleans it, deprimes it, resizes it, and uh, it's ready to load and I can buy them for $45 for a thousand. Uh, I've chose just to go this way because a lot of the matches I shoot are lost brass matches and I can't get my brass back anyways so it uh, seems to work. The next thing we'll be using is some Acme Bullet Company 124 grain high tech coated bullets. Uh, what you see left of this bin here is what is left of my 6,000 of these for the year. So it looks like I got maybe a couple hundred left. Uh, so far I've been really happy with the performance and how they've shot. Up here in the powder measure, 
we are going to be using Alliance Sport Pistol. I uh, switched to that this spring. I think with the high-tech coated bullets, it smokes a little less. Uh, these charges have four grains in them. Um, so that's what I'm using for the components in this. I'm going to take a second here, reset the camera up, and then I'll uh, let you watch me load for a while. So here we go. I have the uh, camera flipped around and we'll record some uh, reloading of these rounds. Uh, to give you a quick rundown uh, about the press, this press is about 10 years old. It was originally bought as a um, non-auto eject press. Uh, in the last, about four years ago, I called Hornady, ordered the parts to change it to an auto eject press. Uh, and I can't tell you how many rounds are through this press at this time. Uh, but overall, it's been a pretty good performer. There's a few little kinks and bugs in it, uh, but I've learned to work with it, and I think for the price point, it's pretty hard to beat. So uh, let's get started here and reload some ammo. So there we had a case misfeed.
video we talked about the uh, ammo plant factory system, the automated system on the press. Right now you can hear it beeping in the background and that's telling me I have a little primer level. So you simply pull the primer tube. In this case I walk over here behind us and I grab a primer tube that I've already filled with the Hornady Lock and Load 1911 primer tube floor system. Stick it on top of the primer tubes, pull the little cotter pin, set that off to the side, place the primer tube uh, level indicator back in the top of the press, and just like that we are back to reloading. One thing I do want to comment right here, I had a misfeed on the case uh, station. Whenever you have an issue like that, you definitely want to take a second and just kind of look the press over. Make sure you know where the press is at and its cycle and what's going on before you just start pulling the handle again. Because it's a great way to end up with some uh, rounds, missing primers, missing powder. There's a lot of things that can go on. So anytime I have to stop, I like to take a minute and uh, just make sure everything is where I think it should be at before I just go back to pulling the handle. Uh, what we had happen here is it's kind of hard to see. I'll see if I can get the camera up here. But we had a case get stuck up here in the case feeder right here on the side. This does happen from time to time. I'm going to set the camera back down. I will get it repositioned here. I'm going to unfix stick that case. How I do that is I turn the case feeder off so I'm not fighting it. Just reach up with my hand, pull the tooth backwards slightly, uh, use my other hand to pop the case out. Turn the case feeder back on, and we are ready to go back to reloading. One other thing I really like about buying the uh, fully sized, clean, deep primed brass is I think it makes the loading process a lot easier. There's not nearly the force involved uh, during reloading, which I think makes it a little more enjoyable process. I found I can load slightly faster than this, uh, but this is a nice comfortable pace for me. Uh, gives me a chance to kind of keep track of everything that's going on. Uh, so I like loading right along about this pace.
The one thing I will admit that happens time to time with this brass is every once in a while you do find one that has a odd size primer pocket that doesn't quite want a seat. Uh, but at this point, with what I pay for it, I just pitch them away. Uh, I think with that said, I'm going to stop the video here. If you like this video, make sure you click the subscribe button up in the upper left hand corner. Once you do that, click on the bell to turn notifications on when I upload future videos. I will also make sure I leave links in the description to the products that I'm using here. Uh, so if any of it interests you, you can check those places out. Thanks and enjoy your day.